Hello again. Okay, just setting up the stream again. Trying to see if things are in fact working. It's a little frustrating when the streams are not working, but I don't really understand why. Using a second device to see if I can monitor um, the stream. It does show that I'm live and I can see the, the video. So let's try. Um, I had finished, I was discussing um, the Celestial Code of Scripture by John McHugh, chapters uh, both 11 and 14. And I had pretty much finished both of those chapters, but there were some other points I wanted to get to that um, I was just getting that choppy video. And I don't know if it's like the signal or one of the devices or what. But it's been happening, so if you can still see here, um, so here's the, the drawing, and I've removed some of the notes that were around here, as so you can see. This uh, yellowish green line is the ecliptic, where the sun, um, the sun, moon, and planets would move along that, that path. This is the Milky Way, defined by these sort of... Uh, pair of light bluish gray uh, lines. This is Orion, um, Eridanus, Taurus, Perseus, Auriga, Gemini, Cancer, the head of Hydra, uh, oh, Canis Minor right there, Canis Major here, uh, Lepus, uh, okay, and it does look like things are still running. Okay, so I just want to talk about briefly how John McHugh has this interpretation and I'm not, I don't, I can't, like it, when I started these uh, astrotheology discussions, I said I'm not trying to tell any person or group of people what to believe in terms of either religion or a specific interpretation of astrotheology. But I do get opinions about, you know, which ones I think are more supported, but also comparing and contrasting when I become aware that there are differing interpretations. So I enjoy McHugh's book very much. But his specific focus is on the wordplay and the constellation writing and the logograms. Whereas some other um, authors and YouTubers that talk about astrotheology, they may focus more on the lines of the constellations or their poses. Or they might focus um, on different interpretations of the kind of mental map or wor world view that that pe ancients had in order to understand how they saw things. So um, I did want to mention some of the so um, I believe that uh, one person I saw talk about this uh, concept was John Knight with a K Lundwall and he does have a YouTube channel and some published books so John Knight Lundwall if you look him up you can find those I don't know if this is in his book but I believe he has a video where he talks about the sea walk as well and his interpretation was more that if you imagine that you're seeing this is the horizon the land and say you're standing in the north looking south, right? I'm going to move this up just a little bit. So imagine you're, you know, you're looking at an inland sea. You're on, you're on land on earth and you're looking at an inland sea. There would not be two suns, okay? That's why I've drawn this divided line. So on one side, we're, I'm imagining this is like the rosy sunrise, which would be East, east would be toward the left if we're looking south. 
And then here, this is the more reddish sunset, which would be on the west if we're looking south. So imagining that we're out looking over the horizon, if we are at, if we live at an area that is an inland sea or even a large sea or ocean, like say the, the Mediterranean Sea, and we use stars for navigation, then a lot of times we probably would be looking at constellations out over the water. So a constellation striding on the water doesn't necessarily have to be in a watery part of the sky. Although, as discussed previously, most of the sky can be argued to be watery in some symbolic sense. But it could, in a more literal fashion, have this, um, have this appearance to be on walking over the waves as well as on land. So something that I saw in, I believe it was one of uh, Lundwall's videos, is the, the version of the miracle in John where they suddenly go from one side of the, um, the sea to the other, is if you think about, in some times of the year, you might see